This is going to be Lessons from History, Part 9. This is Thomas Kissinger, and we'll be reading from Ilaria Ramelli's book, A Larger Hope, Universal Salvation from Christian Beginnings to Julian of Norwich. And we're going to go through a little bit more information here on Augustine, a very influential person in the early church. And uh, Augustine initially was a supporter of universal salvation, but later changed his mind and his beliefs and really became the champion of the teaching of eternal torture. But it's good for believers really to take some time to go back through early church history and to see what happened, uh, who were the major players in it, and how they shaped the beliefs of people and how the message came to be uh, what it is today. So we are really indebted to Ilaria Ramelli, who has taken the time to research and come up with this tremendous information. I think I remember hearing that she spent about 16 years researching and uh, writing her book on apocatastasis, the Greek word that means restoration. So let's get into this information and hear about Augustine to find out what happened. How did it go from the predominant view of the day in the early church of universal salvation through Jesus Christ to this message of eternal torture or eternal hell, which we actually stand against because we believe it's a false teaching and it's not scriptural and it goes against the character and nature of God. Augustine, former supporter to opposer of universal salvation. Augustine, 354 to 430, was a native of North Africa, a teacher in Carthage, then Rome, and finally Milan. It was here that after a long spiritual search, he converted to Christianity, very much under the influence of Ambrose, of whom we have just spoken. He moved back to Africa and was ordained a priest in 391, then Bishop of Hippo in 395. Without question, Augustine is among the most important theologians in the history of the Christian church, exercising a massive theological influence on the Western church. Origen's influence on Augustine will make the object of a specific research. In the 420s, Augustine was engaged in a polemic against Pelagianism, which he and others mistakenly believed to have been inspired by Origen's thought. In this context, he felt the need to oppose Origen's ideas and, in particular, rebuked those merciful Christians who refuse to believe that torments in hell will be eternal. Among these, Origen was the most merciful of all in that he even hypothesized the eschatological salvation of the devil. Augustine had been misinformed also by Orosius's commonatorium about Origen's exact doctrine of restoration. He was convinced that Origen had taught unending shifts between misery and beatitude and the infinite fluctuation between these states. On the contrary, Origen thought that these vicissitudes will definitely come to an end with the end of all aeons in the eventual universal restoration. Here Augustine insisted that suffering in hell will be eternal and that it is a Platonic and Origenian mistake to understand it as limited. Augustine was only seeking to be true to Scripture, but he knew little or no Greek and was unaware that Eternus, eternal fire, in his Latin Bible, translated the Greek Ionian fire, which, as we have seen, does not necessarily mean eternal fire, but otherworldly fire or long-lasting fire. Unfortunately, in Latin, both Idios and Ionios were rendered with Eternus, eternal which generated a terrible confusion that surely facilitated the birth of the idea of eternal punishments in hell. Because of his lack of awareness, Augustine, in his To Erosius, argued that the fire of hell must be eternal, otherwise the eternal beatitude of the just could not be eternal. 
Again, falling into the same linguistic misunderstanding, Augustine declares that the church does well to criticize Origen and his followers who think that the torment of the damned will end at a certain point, while the Lord called it eternal, eternum. But, of course, the Lord only called these torments eternal in the Latin translation of the Bible, which unfortunately was all Augustine was able to fully understand. And this Latin translation, alongside Augustine's huge influence on the Western church, played a significant role in marginalizing Christian universalism for many hundreds of years to come. But Augustine had not always been a defender of eternal torment. Many years earlier, when the target of Augustine's polemic was not yet Pelagianism, but rather Manichaeism, Augustine used against the latter the same metaphysical arguments that Origen used against Gnostics. This, especially in his double treatise on the customs of the Catholic Church and on the customs of Manichaeans. It is not accidental that in this same work, Augustine also embraced the doctrine of universal restoration, whether he knew that it was origins or not. He declared God's goodness orders all creatures that have fallen until they return to the original state from which they fell. This is the very same notion that Origen had expressed, which may have reached Augustine in a compilation or partial translation anterior to Rufinus's God's goodness by means of his Christ calls back all creatures to one and the same end. God's goodness for both Origen and the young Augustine is not simply God's kindness or generosity or mercy, but first and foremost on the ontological plane, it is God's being the absolute good. And since God is the true being, evil, which is opposite to God, the good, is non-being. As Augustine explains in the rest of the passage in question, the creatures that have fallen are precisely rational creatures who, with their free choices, acquire merits or demerits. On the basis of these, God assigns them to different orders. In Origen's view, the order of angels, humans, and demons, all the while never abandoning them and never allowing them to end up by disappearing into evil non-being. God's providence guides these creatures until they return to the original condition from which they have fallen. So we'll bring this teaching to a close here. But surely we can see with the comments made by Ilaria Ramelli that Augustine was a huge player in his day that changed people's mode of thinking from one of universal salvation through Jesus Christ, which this belief existed and was the predominant view of the day, to a belief in eternal punishment or eternal torture or a never-ending hell of misery. In order for him to change the belief to this, that means that the belief in universal salvation that was predominant in that day existed and was there. And most Christians are ignorant of this. They are ignorant to the fact that the majority of the early church fathers believed in universal salvation through Jesus Christ. You need to know that. And you need to be confronted with that. And you need to come to terms with that. And you need to see that this teaching of eternal torture was something that had to be forced against the predominant view of the day. So there you have it for now.